Hi everyone, Bill here from Project Manager. Today, I wanna to introduce you to the Gantt chart. Now the Gantt chart can be intimidating at first if you're not used to this view, but once you start to understand its elements, you'll quickly realize its potential and value. So the basics of the Gantt chart is there's a data grid on the left that has your tasks and all your task details and a timeline on the right. Now the timeline is just a depiction of your task data in a timeline form. So you have your task names, the duration as a timeline, you can see the start and end date, and then the diamonds are milestones and the lines are dependencies between tasks. Now since the data grid is the foundation of the Gantt chart, let's take a look at the different columns so we can understand just all the information you can track in this view. I set my columns up just how I like it. You can set up your columns just how you like it with simply dragging and dropping the columns from side to side. So now let's explore these columns together. Here's an info column. This will display comments associated with tasks, attachments, and so forth. The task name, simple enough. The WBS, this refers to a work breakdown structure. Now this depicts the parent task and subtask relationship. Um, here the parent task is design. And then you can see 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. These are all tasks, subtasks to the design phase. This is the assigned column, simple enough. Priority, simple enough. Now we're at the planned hours and planned resource costs. So now we're looking at some more resource management features. Okay, Mike Smith's been assigned to the task. I think it's gonna take Mike Smith six hours and he makes, let's say $50 an hour, multiply 50 times six and you get your planned resource costs there. We also wanna establish planned start dates and planned finish dates so you can really give your plan shape. There's a duration column to help you quickly understand, okay, which tasks are gonna take a long time. About oh, six days, seven days. I wanna make sure that these tasks don't get delayed. A percent complete, so you can do a uh, simple tracking from the task grid. And now we're gonna start looking at some actual start and finishes. Now, as the project unfolds, it's a good idea to enter your actual data so that you can track and compare your actual data to your plan data, so you can see Okay, is everything going according to plan? Am I falling behind budget? Am I falling behind schedule? And that's where the baseline columns come into play too. So the baseline will freeze your plan dates. When you finish your plan, you go activate baseline. Now I can quickly compare my actual date to my baseline. Okay, it looks like I started this task two days later than the baseline I had originally set. Continuing on, we can see more actual data, actual hours that were spent on the task and actual costs. Now, so of course I mentioned this is great for tracking, but this is also crucial for estimates. So once your project is over, compare that what you thought was gonna happen versus what actually happened. So next time you need to make an estimate for a client, you have the data to back up your proposal. Milestone column, this marks the end of a phase or an important event. Quickly see the status of the task, whether or not it's complete. And then this uh, displays the dependencies in the data grid view. Now I can add even more columns if I want. You can see some aren't populated, so many columns. And you can even add a custom column, which is just gives you that flexibility you need to make your Gantt chart reflect your project. So I hope this video has been helpful. Next time I'll show you how to add tasks and phases and show you how to really use it. But now that you understand how it works, I think you're gonna quickly grow to like this project view. Thanks.